What's up guys, for today's video I want to talk about stock photography and ways you can improve your odds of getting your images accepted. I'll go through some of the common mistakes which many people talk about, but I'll also tell you a trick that I learned which allows me to get a 95 to 100% acceptance rate. I remember when I submitted my first 10 images to Shutterstock and um, I pulled out the top 10 images out of hundreds of photos that I had. I thought they were going to get accepted with no problem, but um, I was shocked to find out in an email by Shutterstock back to me saying that only half the photos were accepted. And um, a lot of the notes that they supplied with the rejections were out of focus um, or a lot of noise. And um, I, I was kind of I was kind of flustered and, and, and confused because I was like, all right, I took these pictures at ISO 100. They look sharp on my screen. And then it dawned on me, I was actually uploading images at full resolution and sometimes I even upscale the photos a little bit um, because I thought I wanted to supply them the largest file possible and that was hurting me and hurting my chances of getting the photos accepted. So this is a trick that I learned um, to really increase my acceptance rate was to just cut the file size in half. Most stock agencies, um, the requirements is about 5 megapixels. So if I'm shooting with a D800, which is a 36 megapixel camera, I don't have to supply that full 36 megapixels. 16 megapixels is plenty for um, getting accepted and, uh, you know, and, and basically increasing my odds because when I'm downscaling to a smaller file, the imperfections are hidden. So if it's a little, you know, it's not tack sharp, it's a little off, if you scale that size of that image down, it will look sharp. Uh, same thing with the noise issues that you might have or chromatic aberrations, things of that nature. They all get hidden when you are reducing the size of your image. Now today's cameras, a lot of them are starting at 20 megapixels and even if you're shooting with a 16 or 12 megapixel camera that still gives you some room to downscale your images a little bit, almost in half. And uh, and it'll still get accepted by most stock agencies. So that is probably the biggest tip that I could give you with stock agencies and, and getting that acceptance rate to be really high on your end. So I'm gonna jump over to uh, the computer screen so I can show you a picture, an old picture from 2014 of mine that I submitted and it got rejected at first, but now it is accepted because of this trick that I've been using. All right, let's jump over to the computer. Okay, so here we are on the computer with an image that I used for a stock agency um, and it got rejected on the first go around because, like I said, I was supplying a full size version of this image and um, it, it's not my best work. You know, I'll admit that right off the bat just because of you know my inexperience at that time when I was taking these photos. Um, it's a pretty cool photo. I like the, the shot and everything like that, but as far as the focus and everything like that, I definitely could do a lot better. Uh, nowadays and I just want to show you if we zoom in here um, on the right side is a downscaled version about half the size of this photo and this is the full size version so if we look at these rocks they look decently sharp but they're not tack sharp um, I mean we got a lot of movement in the water which was intentional but um, and if we go in a little further, which a lot of stock agencies will check your images beyond 100%, so that's something to take in consideration. Um, it's it's definitely soft. Um, I obviously applied probably too much noise uh, reduction uh, when I was creating this photo back in the day. Hence the reason why it is so soft back here. And one of the reasons this got rejected was they said it was out of focus. And that's probably due to the noise reduction I put onto this photo and uh, full size it, it definitely looks soft now with the downscaled version at one to one it looks a little sharper and if we zoom in even at two to one these rocks still appear to be sharp so this is why i downscale because it hides um, these imperfections that might be in the full size version and it's still a usable image you could still make money from this image so that's why 
you know it might not be your photo it might just be the size of your photo that is the problem so don't give up if you're getting a photo rejected try this tip and um, let me just discuss a few other things that might be um, preventing you from getting your photos accepted there's a whole list that they typically put on their website I'll just go through a lot of the common things um, one is a lack of a model release or a property release so if you're taking pictures of people you definitely need a model release from them if you go into like a city or something like that and there's a particular building that you're taking pictures of they may or may not require a property release when you go to upload that photo um, it's hard to tell what I like to do is when I take cityscapes I upload them if they get rejected due to a property release then then I know but um, sometimes you don't know until you try it a lot of times though like skylines of New York City stuff like that they typically get accepted I have a lot of photos of the tribute in light um, for 9-11 and I haven't had too many issues it's kind of odd because certain stock agencies have different rules so something that might get accepted on Shutterstock might not get accepted on Adobe or um, Kenstock or or one of the other ones they it, it kind of varies so you kind of have to just go trial and error with each stock agencies and I'll put a full list of all the stock agencies in my description below for those that are interested in checking them out. The other thing that people tend to do um, wrong when they go to submit photos is the exposure. It might be a little underexposed, sometimes they're overexposed and you get like blown out highlights. So you kind of want to make sure it's a pretty balanced well, um, exposure in your photo. Uh, we already talked about being out of focus and noise and how to kind of mitigate that by reducing the size of your image because uh, I do a lot of night photography and that has noise in it regardless of you know some of the techniques I use but when it's scaled down it's very minimal and they typically get accepted uh, another thing that people commonly do wrong is uh, white balance Either their white balance might be really far off you know too blue or too warm or pink or you know or green or whatever the color might be you got to make sure your white balance is dialed in you know with landscape you kind of get a little a little leeway but when you're dealing with people you want to make their you know make sure their skin tones look accurate uh, another problem might be chromatic aberrations and it's pretty easy to fix in Lightroom you just go down to this checkbox down here Oops, I passed it. And check off, remove chromatic aberrations. Um, you could go to manual if there's some fringing, uh, which I don't have in this photo, but usually it happens around trees. You might get some weird artifacts around the trees. You might have to play with this defringe to kind of fix that up. And if there's a trademark in the photo, so if you are taking pictures of a girl running and this is supposed to be like let's say an exercise picture make sure you photoshop out any trademarks um, like if she had adidas shoes on you want to make sure the adidas logo is photoshopped out and uh, the last thing that i recommend is don't overdo it with the post processing when you go to the extreme with your post processing uh, typically it adds noise um, or or violates you know one of these things on the list so you kind of want to keep it simple and not go crazy with your contrast things of that nature um, if people download their photo and they want to adjust it and post process more that's on them keep yours as simple as possible so that's it that's the list right there of the major things that you could be doing wrong and getting rejected with your photos the last thing I want to touch on with stock photography if you're hesitant about joining any type of stock agency and I get it they pay very little um, but if you have a high quantity of photos just sitting around not making you money you might as well throw them up there and get something for them um, I sell my photos through my my website but it fluctuates I could get one sale one month and then nothing for another month so it, it kinda it's kind of hit or miss with selling my photos on my personal websites but with the stock photos you know I could actually make residual income right now I'm just making money constantly 
and it does fluctuate how much you make each month, but at least I'm making something uh, versus selling them independently, which you never know. You might have a really good month where I could make 500 bucks in sales and then go three months without making anything. So it's kind of a trade-off. And as long as you're using non-exclusive rights, you still own your photos to sell them anywhere you want. So you could sell them on four or five different stock agencies and let's say one makes you 50 bucks, the other one makes you 100 bucks, and the other one makes you 200 bucks. That all adds up. So it's something to consider if you, you know, are nervous about putting your photos on those type of agencies. Uh, do your research, but for me, it actually, I kind of regret not doing it sooner. And that's just my personal take on that. So hopefully this video helps you guys out. Please give me a, a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, Talk to you guys next week. Bye.